Hey, it's Perry here from Tinglish Lifestyle and I'm at Anarchy Farm. I'm just about to feed the fish and then I'm going to show you the fruit setting and the blossoms uh, across the fruit farm. So durian, mangosteen, rambutan and lychee. Uh, if you want to stay tuned and see them, uh, here we go. Okay, so we're starting with the king of fruit, that's durian. So in this tree, let me turn the camera around. In this tree, you can see the fruit setting now. Lots of blossoms on the floor. So this tree is not the healthiest tree. It just produces good fruit. Let me just say this is the second year uh, we started the fruit season. So last year was our first year, this year is the second. And um, before this farm was was um, just a bit of a mess, and they used a lot of hormones and chemicals um, on the fruit trees. Uh, last year was the first year we didn't use anything like that. Just let it go natural, using a lot of compost, compost teas, mulching, chop and drop, all that good stuff, and. Um, not use any nasty hormones and chemicals but because they have been using all these hormones and chemicals it's kind of aged these mature trees considerably and sometimes you just get hold of the branches like recently I did here and this one I just try to clean up a little bit um, but um, the branches literally just fall off in your hands you see this this one here literally just crumbles away um, it's a real shame so that's what they do to get serious growth on their trees but it ages them and they don't last as long as they should um so that's the durian that's the story of the durian but this tree is generally a good producer it was last year it's looking to be this year uh this is one of our mature trees we've got um four dotted across the uh, across the farm and then we've got an area where we've got some uh about a dozen uh two three year old trees uh, which I'll take you to, but they're not fruiting yet, they're not old enough. So while I'm in this area, we have a lot of lychee. So this is just started to come through, let me walk you through. So this is what the lychee look, look like when they first start sprouting around. So what we do with these, well it is come on a little bit more, the, the tree will be actually full of these uh, as you can possibly see if I'm in uh, focus it's hard for me to see on the camera I'm using um, but anyway these these what we have to do I can probably show you on this one we have to thin these out so we wait to see which ones are, the, are looking the best and the healthiest and then we we just literally pinch them out pull them out and then the fruit sets and uh, we get a really good bounty so they're not all uh, too condensed together and uh, fighting for space even though these trees are well last year they were full absolutely full and I pinched them all as well so here's another one over here so you can see how, how busy this is here so we need to uh, pinch a few of these out but I give them a week or two yet And it's just probably coming up. So it's, it's um, the first weekend of the new year. So happy new year. Um, and all this, all the fruit action actually started on Christmas Day. We was over here on Christmas Day. And um, we went to have a look out at everything. And um, to our surprise, our present for the year was all the fruit popping up. So down here we've got uh, the mango steam. Um, so you can see, let me, uh, I did see some flowers on it, I don't know which tree it was on. Yes, this one. So, the fruit's just setting. It just sets on the ends of the branches. 
just one or two fruit and this one here looks like it's all bit flowers so these flowers are then um, pollinated and then will become fruit and this tree is absolutely jammed much the same with the others so mangosteens are biggest crop down on this farm so all this section here is a uh, mangosteen got another durian here that's the mangosteen I'll just shoot the other way shoot into the sun I'll shoot the sun behind me so you can see how stress this tree has been with the hormones just uh, not looking too great but again not too much on this and right at the top they're going to be hard to get there seems to be quite a bit on it but not too much on this tree this year but we'll see we usually have to thin these out as well um, So this is a, a bit of a sucker come up over we've missed. Uh, so it's put a lot of energy, energy into that, and uh, there's no fruit on these branches. So could have done with cutting that off actually, which I might do yet. But I think I'm too late. So, but this I'm just looking up there. It's quite a bit. We will see. See what that promises. So. Over in this section we have um, the rambutan and uh, we've cut this right back. Rambutan, it, um, we get a lot and it was the canopy was just intense. I don't think this has been cleaned in like 20 years. So we really had a, really went to town. You can see we've still got loads of debris to clear up. But if we come around here. You can see just starting setting now, it's just going to flower up and uh, we're going to have lots more rambutan this year. But we've cleared it out because there's no sort of price on rambutan and once it's picked it, it um, goes off pretty quick. So for us, for the, for the work involved to the price you get, it's just not worth the hassle. So, so I'm just irrigating at the moment at the time of day, it's uh, late in the afternoon. So we've got irrigation on. Um, but in this section, there's this banana tree here and the, and the rambutan tree behind it. And then right up to this irrigation here. In between this area, we're going to start building next week a uh, chicken run. So the chickens from our house, um, a few kilometres away, uh, we're going to retire those chickens, that flock, because uh, they're not producing eggs anymore and that's what we use them for. So we're going to retire them, build them a nice retirement home here, uh, they can free range and then just go in here and um, be safe at night. And, um, and then we're going to get a new, new flock for our home for egg production. And then also I've got three geese three geese on order. Uh, they're just hatching I believe and uh, we're going to have uh, a male and two females. They're going to have a home in here as well and um, they will be um, acting as security and then keeping the grass down, especially in this section. So in this section um, this is completely overgrown when we, we took it on. And we cut it all back. It was completely overgrown with all this, which they use for um, for weaving hats and things like that in the area. Uh, it's very strong. And we cut it back. We left a few just for shade for some of the younger trees. Um, cut it back again soon. It's good for mulch. But um, basically, this area we're uh, concentrating on the cacao. So we have the trees here. That's cacao trees. Lots of new growth. They like it here. So these are taking precedence over everything else. 
they like that. These are all grown from seed or from the beans. Um, and they're just over a year old. Um, so this grass is getting quite long. So we need to cut this grass and then get the geese in here and they can uh, they can keep it keep it down. Uh, we've got lots of bananas along this back line. My legs are getting wet. And we've got some coconut in we've planted some coconut and uh, I think some mac trees, more chocolate, and then there's bananas. There's bunches of bananas absolutely everywhere at the moment. Which is fantastic. And then we come through to the young durian area. So these trees in front of me, these are about three, maybe four years old. And um, we need to um, thin out some of these bananas. As soon as they um, fruited, we're, we're cutting them down, some of the big ones at the back here, because they're impeding onto the, uh, onto the trees. But they've all got big bunches of bananas on. So in the next month, maybe, we'll be cutting all those back. So these trees, I recently mulched these with the grass we cut. Um, they're looking nice and healthy. They're about three, four years old. Not going to produce any fruit this year, uh, but in a couple of years' time, they will. And we also bought um, three new trees. So this is one. This was uh, a quarter of the size last year. So that was uh, dug into a nice big hole, lots of great material that was planted into, and uh, that's grown times four in a, in a year. Same with that one over there. And then that was the last one we bought. We found there's a little bit more space we can fit one in there. So I'm going to cut the, the um, uh, I don't even know what that's called, but you know, that, that material over there, that's going to be cut down. Uh, so the so deer gets more sun. But they're growing really well. Uh, in between those durian and uh, the rambutan is some more chocolate, some more cacao. Nice healthy tree. Just trying to stay out of the water. Um, and another one here. I need to uh, I need to prune this. It's getting a bit busy. That's looking good. So we've looked at uh, the durian, the rambutan, the lychee, and the mango sting. So I think we've covered everything. Um, and you can probably hear I'm walking on dried leaves, crunching away. It's always a bit snaky. But there's uh, leaves everywhere. You never see the snakes. Well, they don't tend to get out of the way uh, so far. <laughs> um, here's a uh, <clears throat> jackfruit tree I planted. It's coming on quite nicely. I don't even get to water that. It's not even irrigated. That's cool. And and irrigation was um, could have been a problem this year. I um, this pond here. It's blinding me, the sun's coming off it from the back. But this pond, we have a pump in it, which we irrigate all the uh, farm. And uh, some idiot, namely me, and the pump on, got doing something else, jumped in my car and went home for the evening. And then I got a call from a neighbour here early next morning saying, uh, your pump sounds like it's on and it's not making a very good noise. I jumped in the car, came here and this is six metres deep and it was empty except for a couple of inches of water. So um, I could have killed myself, literally, I was kicking myself. Um, but anyway, the uh, what happened was the um, I left the pump on, my idiot. I won't do that again, I set up a system now so I never leave the pump on again. But on the far side, there's a little crevice and there's water coming in. There's an underground stream. Uh, and within a week, this filled up to just about this level. Probably a bit, a bit higher because I'm pumping out every day at the moment. Um, 
but every day there's water coming in. Even though we haven't had any water, we had like no rain, not a drop of rain in um, two months. So we finished the renovation of the house where it was raining like crazy most of the time. As soon as we finished, it stopped raining. We didn't even get a chance to fill the ongs up um, from the runoff from the roof. And uh, it hasn't rained since. Uh, and that's only two months. It doesn't sound long. I know if you're living in Australia, it hasn't rained for seven years. But um, two months when you're running a farm, everything needs water. Um, two months is a long time as you... As you Probably well known. So uh, we were so fortunate that we was told when we bought this farm a year ago, 18 months ago, that um, that the pond self fills, and we're like, uh, oh, hopefully they're telling the truth. <laughs> um, turns out they were, and uh, that was the best decision we got because we, you know, when I bought the land, I wanted water was one of the uh, main things we did on site. And uh, I'm so lucky it turned out all right because I entered the pond, uh, hasn't rained for two months, and uh, we could have been facing complete ruin this year with uh, no water. Uh, thankfully, someone was smiling on us that day. So around the back of the house, around the back of the kitchen and here we've got the uh, cacao outside the kitchen, they're taller than me now so just over six feet tall, slightly smaller, it's branching out nicely let's go back a bit so they're coming along all right, we've got a coffee set in the middle um, got the same around the side and then I'm here this area it's um, kind of like a garden. Um, we was going to do a kitchen garden, but we decided not to. So we've got these um, these uh, concrete rings, and it's just a ring, so they they they're open to the ground. So we fill them up with some really good stuff, mulch them in big time. We've got a chocolate tree there, chocolate tree at the back there. You can see. I got a, I that's a lemon tree. That's a nice lemon tree. That's a graph from my lemon tree at home. This is a um, mulberry tree, but it's a, a long mulberry. The mulberries are kind of this long, like cattails, uh, and they're very sweet. Uh, this is a, what we call them now. Um, sorry, this is a, a, a lime. Yeah, manau lime. Um, Oh, what's it? Uh, kaffir lime. A kaffir lime tree. So that's a kaffir lime. Got a cherry tree here. That's a cutting from... I have All these are cuttings from our house. So it's nice having a second property where you can actually propagate everything and not spend too much money on plants when you just get cuttings. Uh, and this is... Um, this is a manau or a lemon tree as well. So this is growing really well actually, but I've had a lot of caterpillars on this. I've been taking them off by hand. There's lots of new growth, it's looking good, likes the spot. And this is a pomegranate. So these are some really beautiful flowers. So that's a pomegranate. And then around, yes, the rest of the year we just got some flowers. Um, I've got a praying hands banana here from home. Planted that, that was a pup. And then I've got some chocolate back here. There's more bananas, um, it's various, lots of flowers interplanted here. Also, I'm trying to grow, I haven't planted anything on this ground yet, but I will be planting uh, perennial peanuts uh, as a ground cover. So it fixes uh, nitrogen in the ground and it's green, it uh, spreads out quite nicely and has beautiful yellow flowers. Um, so because it's so dry i just planted a few they're getting watered with everything else but nothing's really popping up too much at the moment so i'm going to wait till the rainy season and then plant everything out properly uh, and they get a nice ground cover between everything <coughs> excuse me so um you can see our ongs are literally dry they've got like an inch of water in there 
I've not taken anything out of there since I've filled up hardly. Um, and I've been planting uh, various plants here, mainly cuttings from our house. Uh, this was this was purchased. Uh, this is at our house. It was uh, getting neglected, so I brought it down here. Uh, these are all cuttings from the within the farm. We've got loads of this kind of stuff in the farm, just growing everywhere. Uh, so like uh, ginger family there, and most of these plants are cuttings, as I say, from my other place. There's lots of bromeliads. Uh, I've got loads more I need to uh, separate at home and bring down, but lots of bromeliads, all kinds of things there. So that's half the lot colour. I want to get it all green and lush uh, in the wet season. That's an orchid. I forget what it's called, but it's the largest orchid um, known. It's really nice. Not many yet. So again, it's all very young, but we're getting there. And the last thing we've been doing is uh, this living wall. So it's been up for a couple of weeks now, and we're just seeing what's actually working here and what's not. These aren't too bad, uh, but these 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 ferns are just drying out super quick all the time, as you see. So are they, and unfortunately, these are too. We just water them every day, but it's been so hot, so dry, and so windy. That's the main thing. The wind just dries everything out. So, um, but you know, th this this was a, a work in progress. I'll probably take these out in the next couple of weeks when I get some time. Change them over. Put some bromeliads in there or something like that. I've got some kicking around. And we just see what's working. Some things are working really, really well. Oh, this is even flowering. I was loving it here. If you saw the video making this only from two weeks ago, that wasn't there then. And I did see... I just see this as well. This is just flowering as well. So... There's going to be a flower on there in a week or two's time. Let's pull that back a bit. There we go. So, yeah, something's like it here. I saw some red flowers. Oh, there, here we go. That's flowering up as well. It's quite nice. Beautiful leaves. Nice flowers. So some things are really liking it here. Some things are finding it a little bit difficult. These ferns are nice. These are going well. Even this fern's going well. It's new growth on that. Yeah. But it's been so windy. I had um, a lot of cacao in this area. And you can hardly see them now. I'll show you. Look, see the other the cacao at the back of the house where they're protected. But here, this is a beautiful tree. It was. I mean, it's still alive and it's it's kicking out some new new shoots. But um, the wind comes through here from behind me, straight down here, and uh, I've got four trees here. This one's even worse. This one here, I can't even see it. Uh, it's just got some shoots coming on there. So the cacao in this area doesn't like doesn't like the wind. Certainly doesn't like the wind in this dry climate. So it's down the rest of the farm where it's more. Um, protected from the wind. Even there it's not too bad. Just down a slope, more some trees. You know, in in in, uh, in its native form it's uh, it's growing in it's growing in forests. That's one over here. Oh, we've got them everywhere now. That's a nice looking tree. More over there. And this is looking really good. It's been protected with a bit of shade cloth, but uh, they've, over, they've outgrown the shade cloth. Looking good. Happy with that. 
Looking beautiful. Some more here. Looks like young, young leaves on this one. And then we're back to the mango steam tree. Oh, this one's really going well. This is as tall as me. That's the growth. And then we have the uh, I'm doing all the shade cloth up there, these are all three metres apart, all the way down there, and then I go all the way down there. So, not looking too bad. Some of the grass is growing well, some not so well. These trees are looking fantastic. It's going to be a great crop this year, as long as you don't get the heavy, heavy rains. Last year, we had a lot more rain last year, but it wasn't too heavy in the, in this cool season. So um, when you get the heavy rains, you can knock all the fruit off the tree. Because when it rains here heavy, it rains heavy. Um, but this year, we're praying for rain, really. So. I'm going to change the uh, I'm going to change the water over to irrigate another part of the farm, and, um, and then I'm going to get the old watering can out and get it in that pond, and just give the trees a little drink. Some of the trees that are not irrigated, just to uh, give a little drink, help them on the way in these hard times. There you go. But it looks like it's going to be a really good year for fruit this year. So we can't grumble. So, um, meet us back in videos in the future videos and we'll uh, update you on the progress of the fruit. You can see, look, these bananas. So heavy, unless you broke, and that winds are so high, just broke, broke the bananas. So I'll leave those on there, and uh, as long as I can, because they're very small actually, um, they might ripen up a little bit more, get a little bit bigger. But uh, those leaves are uh, still got a bit of life in them, so a little bit of uh, life blood's going through. But uh, we'll see what happens with them. Um, these papayas are growing nicely. These are just uh, seeds that are just thrown on the floor, and they're all growing nicely here. And then we've got a little kitchen here with various things, and another another cacao here, Some perennial spinach, chilies, and different things here. So this one, cherry tree, cacao, another durian. Good. That's a cow. And, uh, now we've got more light in here. I've got rows of uh, cacao in here in between all these trees. So now they're getting more light. I can see they've got lots of new, uh, lots, lots of new growth on them. They're not looking too bad. Check out the ones on the far side. Gotta cut some of this wood up. Got some friends who, uh, smoke bacon and things like that. Not a pipe, but um, they smoke bacon to eat. Uh, that's only a week actually, it's beautiful. Uh, so this Rambutan uh, wood, uh, the larger pieces, 
I'll be saving some of these for them, and there will be uh, some deep smoke up there. Uh, not fake it. It's good. So everything's going good. Besides, no oh. That's the end of the video. So, uh, even the moon's coming up. I don't know if you can see that on the camera. The moon up. It's only about 4 o'clock in the afternoon, 4.30. I think. <laughs> Who knows? I don't know what time of day it is. I don't know what day it is. So, um, well, that was nice to have seen this before. Some grand orchids just growing there. And lots of beautiful flowers growing here. So we didn't put anything back until uh, we know where everything is. That's a post for the chickens. For the chicken coop. So, a little update for the new year. I've got something down on Attic Farm. And uh, if you like this video, uh, subscribe for future updates and uh, drop us a like and or a unlike, either, we don't mind. Uh, it's all good for the uh, YouTube algorithm and um, gives a chance for a few more people to see what's going on here and uh, we'll see you on the next video it's a lovely Sunday afternoon here sound sound of some rubber trees getting cut down by the sound of it besides that just the sound of the wind not too crazy today it's been battered but lots of new growth so happy with that. These, these are looking good. I like this. A leaf. That's good. Here's a tree. I uh, I leave with a parting shot. This is a uh, a tree I planted last year in the rainy season, and it's a breadfruit tree. Never had a breadfruit. Heard a lot about them. Um, managed to find a tree and uh, that's grown tremendously in the last uh, oh, I'm eight, eight to ten months I guess and the leaves are huge really really nice They're really coarse but yeah breadfruit who would have thought anyway have a great day I've got to change some water over well, some trees are going to have far too much and others aren't going to have enough at all. And here's our favourite cat. <laughs> okay. Have a great weekend. And I'll see you on the next one. Sorry, cat. <laughs>